In our last video, we introduced effects and processing. Through the next videos, in order for you to better understand the various analog and digital effects, we'll explore some of the natural sound phenomena that the effects emulate. In this video, we'll begin with a completely blank canvas. What may or may not be obvious is that our surroundings have a profound effect on the sound that we hear. As sound radiates out from its source through a space, it reflects off all the objects in the space and the reflections build up, colouring the sound, and then decay as the sound energy dissipates through being absorbed by objects in the space and the air in the room as the sound passes through it. This phenomenon is known as reverberation or reverb. As we're bombarded by a relentless stream of sound in our natural environment, the environment itself colours the sounds that we hear. The only way to get a completely blank canvas where sound can be experienced in its rawest form is to go into a special room called an anechoic chamber. I'm here at the University's Acoustics Lab where I'll be taking you inside the anechoic chamber which is one of the few places where you can actually experience silence. If you stay inside the room long enough it's quiet enough for you to hear your nervous system working. Anechoic literally means no echo. This is a completely artificial environment where the walls of the space absorb any sounds made within it. As we enter the space, you'll be able to see that it consists of some very large fiberglass baffles on the walls and ceiling, approximately 1.5 metres deep, and I'm standing on acoustically transparent mesh. Beneath me is a base trap, approximately the same size as the space we're in, and it's also filled with baffles. The whole room is suspended in oil in order to disconnect it from the building that surrounds it and nearby roads. Now that we've closed the chamber door, you may have noticed that the sound of my voice changed as it's no longer being reinforced by the surrounding environment. Reverberation is very important in our perception of sound. The anechoic chamber is actually quite an uncomfortable space to be in. The first thing you notice is that the air pressure seems different to outside, causing your ears to crack and pop. But actually, this is just your eardrums adjusting to no longer vibrating constantly from the surrounding environmental noise. All bodily sounds seem to be amplified. This is because there are now no external noises masking your internal sounds. Due to your eardrums no longer moving, your balance also seems a little strange. And if you turn the lights off, many people fall over with no visual cues to help maintain balance and find that they cannot stay in the space for longer than about half an hour. As I leave the chamber, you'll find that the sound in my voice changes again quite dramatically as the reverberation of the hallway again colours my voice. You might be thinking that the anechoic chamber would be a great recording space, but actually it's not. Recordings made in these spaces tend to sound weak as they're actually too dry. A good studio recording space is acoustically prepared to have excellent natural reverb characteristics that colour the recordings that are made in the space. Anechoic chambers are actually used for acoustics experiments where accurate measurement of the sound produced by an object is a priority. All reverb audio effects attempt to recreate the way that sound is affected by space. Analog methods include running a sound through a spring or plate, as happened with many guitar amplifiers, while digital reverbs use a variety of methods. The most interesting is probably convolution reverb, which is a fairly recent development. A starter's pistol is fired into a space and the sound is recorded. This recording is then used by the effect to create an accurate representation of the room's reverb that can then be applied to any sound. In our next video, we'll look at some of the other ways that sound can be coloured through filtering.